For centuries, tribes have settled in places near water so that they can grow food on the fertile banks and use water for their survival. However, this time, instead of living near an ocean or river, humans have decided to live on it. Times have changed and the human population has exploded. There's not much space left on land to accommodate the growing numbers. Up to 40% of the planet's land is degraded due to deforestation, pollution, and desertification. This directly affects half of humanity and threatens roughly half of the global GDP or $44 trillion. With the rising temperatures, glaciers are melting at an alarming rate, causing the sea level to rise. Today, 67% of cities are located in adjacent areas to seashores and rivers. If we continue with this pace, by the turn of the century, the sea level is expected to rise by one meter. We don't have to explain the kind of catastrophe that would follow because we've all seen enough movies to see how that goes. According to research, coastal cities like Tokyo, Mumbai, New York, Istanbul, Bangkok, and London will be submerged by 2050 if actionable steps aren't taken. Talking to Japan, its cities like Tokyo and Osaka will suffer the damage of $270 billion and $340 billion by 2100 due to rising sea levels. Different cities around the world are already bracing themselves for this challenge. Recently, the UN is backing a floating in South Korea Busan that could house up to 12,000 people. Saudi Arabia is also building Oxagon, which is a port city part of a larger project called NEO. We've created videos on both these mega projects, so if you're interested, do check them out. The Netherlands is famous for its climate-friendly approach and has launched a floating farm on the harbor of Rotterdam. As far as Japan's concerned, the company has always gotten the dirty end of the stick as far as natural disasters are concerned. It sits on that meeting point of four tectonic plates, causing frequent tsunamis and earthquakes. It is also close to the Pacific Ring of Fire. For those unaware, the Pacific Ring of Fire is a belt containing active volcanoes laid across the Pacific Ocean. Japan's proximity to this ring is the main cause behind its frequent earthquakes. In addition, about 80% of tsunamis happen within the Ring of Fire. Given the grave danger posed to Japan, it needs to adopt some strategy to relocate its population in case of disaster. The project we're discussing today is a floating city that claims to protect its residents in case of a tsunami in addition to providing high-end living. Is this a workable solution? Let's find out. For those who are new to the channel, we welcome you to Visionary Builds. Here you can find the latest news and architecture from around the world, so hit the subscribe button to watch two videos weekly. The Dojen city is planned to be constructed like a ring making it appear like a small, autonomous village. The diameter of the ring spans up to one mile, while the total circumference is 2.4 miles. The ring is the first zone of the city. It's planned to be a habitable zone, with permanent residents up to 10,000. The rest of the 30,000 would be tourists. It's shaped like a ship to protect the inner bay. The ring also incorporates other lifelines of the city like water management, sewage, energy, and data cables. And ARC, the startup behind Dojin City, claims that the ring is capable of protecting residents against tsunamis and other weather conditions. As more and more people living in low-lying cities will be forced to relocate, the world needs space to accommodate them. Like a contemporary interpretation of Noah's Ark, the city will host victims of natural disasters and climate refugees. The city offers an extensive natural disaster program whereby residents and visitors alike get to learn about evacuation site functions in the event of earthquakes, floods, and tsunamis. Dojin City is being marketed as a sustainable blueprint for a maritime village. And ARC estimates that the annual power generation will be 22,265,000 kilowatts. There's no detail as to how this target will be achieved, but official videos show wind and solar panels being installed in the ocean. The city's concept was hatched by an international team of architects and designers led by Italian firm Luca Curci Architects and UK-based Tim Fu Design. Until now, the sketch is only available on paper, while the company looks for investors and official approval. That's why the location of Dojin City isn't decided, nor is the budget but it can be predicted to rack up in billions. The second zone is the inner portion of the city or the artificial bay. Here, you have floating structures that can be assembled or disassembled on an as-need basis. Unlike on land, there's no restriction on moving structures from one place to another. Being a fully independent city, it'll have every urban amenity known to mankind. 
schools, security centers, cemeteries and prayer areas, offices, hospitals, parks, stadiums, and halls to name a few. There will also be residential hotels for facilitating visitors in the region. The third and last zone would be the underworld city. All the data centers will be housed under sea. Data centers usually use a lot of energy to maintain their servers. They consume about 1,000 kilowatt hours per square meter. This is about 10 times the power consumption of a typical American home. Much of it is consumed just for cooling the servers, but if you put the whole of it under sea, it will naturally be cooled by the water, which in turn will enhance its efficiency. The Undersea Edge Data Center will provide other high-value services such as urban management OS, healthcare data analysis, and drug discovery simulation. If that wasn't ambitious enough, NARC's taking it to the next level. Taking advantage of the open waters, Dojin City will be connected to space. Rendering show that there will be space for a launch and landing site for rockets. This city will generate 3,200 tons of waste annually, which is a modest figure, and will consume roughly 2 million liters of water, or 530,000 gallons per year. Dojin's being dubbed as a smart health city and will heavily rely on medical tourism as its main form of income. Residents can receive daily telemedicine consultations and have their health status analyzed via devices and sensors, blood samples, and genome analysis for an accurate evaluation. Moreover, people will have access to advanced robotic surgery and drug research. In this way, Anarch is helping to visualize a disease-free society. Building on sea allows us to build things from scratch in comparison to land where architects are limited by physical restrictions. And when you build something from scratch, it can be optimized for human well-being. Healthcare isn't just limited to treating illness. It'll encompass all areas of a person's life. Residents will be educated on medical foods and cuisine nurtured in maritime cities. Using high-end technology, scientists would be able to grow food and vegetables from seawater. This would bypass the need for soil farming altogether as seawater becomes our source of nutrients without polluting the ocean. Dojin City will have its floating farms in which the upper layer is used for vegetable cultivation while the lower level will be used for research aimed at soil improvement and cultivation of multiple varieties of fish. Its distinctive V-shaped roof is great for catching rainwater, which when mixed with seawater will serve as a fertilizer for crop yields. In this way, the city will be able to produce 7,000 tons annually without relying on any outside source. If this project receives the green light, it can be ready by as early as 2030. Dojin City might seem like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it's closer to reality than you think. Dojin City is part of an initiative called the New Ocean Consortium. This project views the ocean, which comprises of 70% of the planet, as a new sphere of survival. At the moment, Think tanks are proposing the development of a whole new ecosystem on the sea. Imagine interconnected naval cities complete with housing, information, electricity, food, and medicine. It's important to note here that building a full-fledged community on oceans isn't an easy task. The marine businesses are fraught with legal and technical difficulties, yet companies are still researching the feasibility of undersea development. Recently, Microsoft submerged a data center almost the size of a shipping container underwater. This data center had a storage of 27.6 petabytes of disk, or roughly about 5 million movies. After two years, they retrieved the data center and found the method to be practical. Forming cities on sea won't be such a far stretch after all. We have many structures on the sea like oil rigs, sea crossings, and artificial islands built through reclaiming land. Dubai is no stranger to this as its very popular palm islands are used as a tourist destination for millions. What's your opinion on floating cities? Is this a good option for a rapidly depleting space or another profitable business for humans? Mention your thoughts below. If you liked today's video, hit the like and subscribe button. We are committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot. We'll see you in the next video.